Hello and welcome to this video where we're going to be learning about piecewise functions. There are some exam questions in this video's description that you may want to try after watching the video. Let's start by creating a function f of x, and I'm going to say it equals 3x minus 6, but only for a particular set of x values. The x values I'm picking are in between 0 and 3. Then I'm going to say it's equal to a different function, so 6 minus x for example, but for a different set of x values from 3 to 8. And finally, I'm going to add a third part to this function, I'm going to say it equals negative 2, and then another set of x values, this time from 8 to 10. You can recognise this as a piecewise function, because rather than being defined as just one function for all values of x, it's defined in different pieces. We have three pieces of the function here. You may be given an exam question which says draw the graph of y equals f of x, so that's what we'll practise now. So you'll be given some axes like this, and we'll start with the first bit of the function, 3x minus 6. Now if we were to draw the graph of y equals 3x minus 6, it has an intercept of negative 6 down here, and a gradient of 3, so the next point would be 1, negative 3, then 2, 0, then 3, 3, 4, 6, and so on, and we would normally join those up with a straight line like this. But for this function, it's only equal to 3x minus 6 for a particular set of x values, when x is in between 0 and 3. So if we only need the points where x is in between 0 and 3, we don't actually need this whole line. We just need the points up to when x equals 3, so this point here. So what we'll do is remove the graph after this point, like this. Those of you that have a good eye for detail might actually notice that the point when x equals 3 isn't actually included here, because in the inequality for the domain there, it said x is less than 3. Now, there's two things to say about this. Firstly, in the next bit of the function, we're going to use the point when x does equal 3, and we'll end up at the point 3, 3. So this point will still exist in this function. The second thing to say is if you're not going to end this function at x equals 3, where are you going to end it? 2.9? 2.99? 2.999? 2 Can you actually plot that reasonably on a graph? It becomes very difficult. So even though it says less than rather than less than or equal to, we're going to leave on the point when x equals 3. Now we move on to the next part of the function, so when it's equal to 6 minus x, and this is for the x values between 3 and 8. So this function has an intercept at positive 6, and it has a gradient of negative 1, so we get the point 1, 5, 2, 4, and so on. Normally we would connect these up with a straight line like this. However, we only want the points where the x values are in between 3 and 8. So this point here, where x was 3, and this point here, where x was 8. So we can get rid of everything before that point, and everything after that point and we end up with this part of the function here. Now we move on to the last part of the function, when f of x equals negative 2. This is just a horizontal line at negative 2, like this. But we only want the x values here to be between 8 and 10. So we can remove all of the points before 8, like this. We've now completed the graph of y equals f of x. It should hopefully be clear why this is a piecewise function, because the function is made up of three different pieces. This time, let's take a piecewise function that's already been drawn for us, and try and work out what the function is. So we'll start with f of x. Let's take each of the parts of the function in turn, so the first piece here. If you look at the coordinates that this function goes through, you've got 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 4, and 3, 9. Hopefully you spot that 0, 1, 4, and 9 are just square numbers. So for this first part of the function, it's just equal to x squared. Now let's move on to the second part of the function. So this part here. This is a straight line, so we know it will be of the form mx plus c. We'll need to start by calculating the gradient. So let's pick two points on the line. I'm going to go for these two here, and draw a gradient triangle. You should be able to see the gradient here is negative 4. So the graph will be of the form y equals negative 4x plus c. So we need to now find the intercept. Unfortunately, we can't just extend the line off like this and try and find the intercept that way because the graph doesn't go that far. So let's take the graph, y equals negative 4x plus c, and just substitute in a point from the line. I'm going to go for this point here. It has coordinates 4, 5. So let's replace x with 4 and y with 5. So 5 equals negative 4 lots of 4 plus c, or negative 4 lots of 4 is just negative 16, and then if you add 16 to both sides, you'll get c equals 21. So we know the gradient's negative 4, and the intercept is 21, so it must be negative 4x 
plus 21. Now we'll move on to the final part of the graph, this one here, it's also a straight line. So again we'll start with a gradient triangle. I'm going to go for these two points here, and you can see the gradient of this one is positive one half. So again it will be of the form y equals half x plus c. Let's pick a point on the line, I'll go for this one here, 7, 2. Let's replace y with 2, so 2 equals, and then x with 7, so half of 7 plus c. Half of 7 is just 3.5, and then if you take away 3.5 from both sides you'll get c equals negative 1.5. So for the final part of the function, the final piece, negative half x, take away 1.5. Now we haven't finished yet, we just need to put on the different domains for each of these parts of the function. So the first part of the function starts at 0, and you can see from the graph it ends here when x equals 3. So x is in between 0 and 3. The next part starts at 3, and you can see from the graph here it ends at 5. So you can see x is in between 3 and 5. And the last part of the graph starts at 5, and you can see here it finishes at 10, so x is in between 5 and 10. All we need to do now is add in the inequality sign, so we'll start with a less than or equal to. And you might remember from the previous question we need to be careful at this point. So notice the number 3 here is at the end of this interval, but the start of the next interval. Now we can't have less than or equal to's on both of these, otherwise if you inputted 3 you wouldn't know which function to go for. So we'll put a less than on the first one, and a less than or equal to on the second one. This means 3 is included in the second interval, not the first one. We do the same process with the 5's, so less than 5, and then less than or equal to on the next one, and since we finish the function at 10, we'll put less than or equal to for the 10. Thank you for watching this video, I hope you found it useful, remember there are some exam questions in the video's description that you can try now. Check out the video I think you should watch next, and subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos.